which stopped in 2010. As we can see in the plot in the left corner and at the bottom. Then the selection analysis uh, shows us that there is no selection on chromosome 8. Well, here it's showing the Tajima D, Tajima's D uh, analysis, uh, which took a negative value across the genome, which correlated with population growth, supporting the clonal expansion finding in the population from 2012 and 18. In a part, when we run the analysis compared of link, based on linkage equilibrium, uh, which we also selection in genes involved in interaction of the parasite with the host, and also with the FPEHHA uh, test, uh, detected a signal in the FP2A gene, which is involved in hemoglobin digestion and also has been suggested as a candidate gene for Artemis immune resistance. <clears throat> so in conclusion, uh, these are preliminary results for master thesis, and this is uh, at, the, at this moment, we're concluding that first the circulating parasites from 2012 and 18, the more recent parasites, are product of clonal expansion. There is no selection of the deletion of the HRP2 gene because they didn't find any in chromosome 8, but are selection in other lossy, including fp 2 a gene and lossy involving parasite and host interaction. And thank you. Thank you very much for keeping to time. I believe we have Daneshwa Prusty here. Um, Danishwa, are you here? Okay, so we can have the first. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, all right, so we can have the first. We can, can you hear you. me, please? Yes, yes, we can hear you, Dagon. Okay, so we can have you present. So Danishwa Prusti is presenting from the Central University of Rajasthan, um, Ajma in India, and he'll be presenting on rational designing of peptide ligand conjugates based immunotherapy. For the treatment of complicated malaria. Go ahead um, with your presentation, Danishwa. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I feel uh, glad and honored to share one of my research work, which is basically discrete designing of peptide ligand conjugates based immunotherapy for the treatment of complicated malaria. So as all of you know that malaria, major malaria deaths happens due to complicated malaria, and the complication of complicated malaria arises due to sequestration of Infected RBC in the uh, in the uh, capillary microvasculature. So the therapeutics what we have designed basically the peptide ligand conjugate of three components. Uh, they were ligand, the natural com natural compound ligand, and one uh, a non cleavable linker and a immunogenic peptide. This ligand basically developed through a virtual hydrofoot uh, screening. And we're supposed to bind the DBA2 beta domain of the EMP1, which explicitly expressed on the surface of infected RBC. And as you as you all even know, like that EMP1 basically responsible for the sequestration of infected RBC in the blood capillary microvasculation. So once this natural compound bind with EMP1, it will not allow to bind with the endothelial cells of the of, of the character of the blood capillary. And also if the, uh, the uh, uh, infected IVs are already attached with the endothelial cells, it will inhibit the binding by competitive binding, competitive inhibition. And so once detached, this, uh, this RBG, which is decorated by the uh, peptide ligand conjugate, the uh, as already this peptide basically derived from the uh, uh, derived from the protein-based vaccines used in malaria endemic countries. So the complex basically uh, would be cleared by the pre-existing vaccine-mediated immunity, like all the uh, immune system will basically attack on the infected RBC because it is, it is basically decorated with the peptide, which is immunogenic and derived from the peptide-based vaccines. So in this way, it will, the, the complicated malaria can be cured. And the, the best of this therapy is basically, it is a retargeted therapy, will only target the infected IBC. It will have minimum chance of drug resistance. And the third one is basically, uh, it is a, a, it is an innovative way to, to treat complicated malaria. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, Danishwa, for keeping to time. So our next presenter is Akancha Mishra. Yes. Um, Akancha Mishra will be presenting to us about the um, autophagy protein ATG7 
um, is essential and druggable for maintaining malaria parasite cellular hemostasis and organal biogenesis. Akansha um, Misra is presenting from the Central Drug Research Institute, also in India. Please go ahead, Akansha. Hello, everyone. Hope you are having a wonderful day there. I'm Akansha Mishra from CSIR CDRI, presenting here my work entitled Autophagia Protein ETG7. It's essential and druggable for maintaining malaria parasite or cellular homeostasis and organal biogenesis. I have targeted ATG7 uh, in Plasmodium vergae life cycle and uh, characterized its function at uh, various time points. ATG7 is an even activating enzyme in uh, ATG conjugation pathway, which has shown to be essential for apicoplast, apicoplast biogenesis and uh, parasite survival. So we first started with uh, by deleting the gene through conventional methods, but uh, failed to get the parasite and blood disease, indicating that like, this gene is essential for parasite for parasite survival. Then we resorted to delete the gene using conditional mutagenesis system, in uh, which specifically excises the gene in the mosquito stage. And uh, these knockout parasites have shown uh, normal mosquito stage development, but when we passed these parasites in uh, C7BL6 mice, there was delayed uh, prepatency, significant delay in the prepatency. And when we genotype the mice that became patent, uh, we have found only, uh, on genotyping, we have found that there is only non-excised locus, indicating that the gene might be essential for the liver stage development. And to illustrate that, this, uh, we infected the HAPG2 hepatoma cancer cell line with the wild type and knockout parasites. And we have found that there is a significant decrease in the number and as well as in the area of the parasite post 40 hour of infection. And uh, indicating that the parasite is getting <clears throat> getting attenuated at layer, late time points and liver stage development. This was also confirmed through real-time analysis of uh, PV18S and PVMSP, PV18S and uh, PVMSP transcripts, which were shown to be decreased uh, post at late time points of liver stage development. To further visualize the uh, phenotypic abnormalities, we immunostain the uh, late liver stage forms with uh, organal markers like MSP1, ACP, and BIP. And, uh, we have found that the uh, knockout parasites uh, fail to mature into infective merosomes as there is very poor development of MSP, which is the marker of uh, mature merozoites, and uh, as well as the branching and the division of epicoplast and the ER was uh, severely, and uh, their branching as well as their division into individual merozoites was severely affected, indicating that this conjugation pathway is essential for the parasite differentiation in the liver stage. Next, we explore the another aspect of ADG conjugation pathway, that is the exotosis of micronemes. Micronemes are extrafilous, uh, superfilous organelles, which are exotosed uh, of the EF at late time points around 40 to 55 hours. But in uh, knockout parasite, we have found that these uh, uh, micronemes remain centered and fail to excrete it out, indicating that this conjugation, it, conjugation of ATG8 on these organelles is essential for their exotosis of the EF. So seeing its essentiality in the blood as well as in liver stage, we try to target this uh, protein in a plasmodium falciparum. For this, we have modeled the uh, PF-ATG7 protein and uh, screened the uh, Mavridge library against the ATP binding domain of this uh, particular protein. And we have found 15 uh, compounds which were showing uh, very good activity towards uh, these uh, towards this uh, target site. And uh, they were showing inhibitory uh, inhibitory uh, inhibition, the gro inhibition of growth at uh, two to five micromolar concentration. And to further confirm this, we uh, that is uh, compound were acting specifically at this uh, pathway. We have seen that in uh, uh, treated parasites, the conjugation of ATG8 was affected as well as the apicoplast failed to branch. <clears throat> so in my study, I have shown that this uh, ATG8 conjugation pathway is essential for the apicoplast biogenesis as well as parasite differentiation in the liver stages and the excretion of uh, superfluous organelles in uh, liver stage development. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Akansha Mishra. Our next presenter is uh, Awusulu Uluwashiun Bumi. So Awusulu is presenting from Nigeria, the Federal University of um, Technology in Akure. And um, Awusulu will be presenting on the performance evaluation of nested um, polymerase chain reaction, like microscopy and plasmodium phosphorus histidine rich protein 2 rapid diagnostic test in the detection of phosphorus malaria in Akure, Nigeria. Over to you, Awusulu. Yeah, thank you very much okay, for the opportunity given to me. Uh, my name is Aosolu Luwashu, and I'll be presenting on performance evaluation of nested polymerase chain reaction, like microscopy, and plasmodium phosphorus, the rich protein 2 
rapid diagnostic test in the detection of aspirin malaria in Accra, Nigeria. The introduction, malaria is actually a disease of major public health problem, and it is caused by the protozoan parasite of the genus Plasmodium. And it is transmitted by the female Hanopheles mosquito. Currently, accurate and prompt malaria diagnosis is a major problem in malaria endemic countries generally, particularly in Nigeria. And this could actually lead to underdiagnosis, overdiagnosis, and even misdiagnosis. Thus, this study is actually conducted on the performance evaluation of nested polymerase chain reaction, the light microscopy, and also plasmodium phosphorylistidine, which potentially like rapid diagnostic tests in the detection of aspirin malaria in Accra, Nigeria. The methodology, the study area was actually carried out in Accra, South Local Government Area from Do State, Nigeria. And two to three mil of the venous blood was actually collected from patients into EDTA for microscopy analysis. And part of the blood were also allocated on 3mm Wattman filter paper for molecular analysis. And the filter for the molecular analysis, the filter paper blood spot was actually cut into 1.5 mil tube using a puncture and the genomic DNA was extracted using cardiac blood and tissue extraction kits. Then the plasmodium species was identified using the ATS RNA based nested PCR using the genus specific and also the species specific uh, primer to detect the various uh, species and eventually was sent for sequencing and uh, was analyzed. The bioinformatics analysis was actually blasted and was determined. The results, the table one here shows the diagnosis at great and the performance of microscopy and RDT with respect to PCR as a reference standard. But looking at the result, we could see that the false positive, which is actually the ne uh, PCR negative, was zero for microscopy. However, it was 5.10 for RDT. And this is actually as a result of the presence of the plasmodium phosphorylistidine rich uh, protein 2 the antigen in the blood of the patient. It has been shown by previous research, previous studies, that plasmodium phosphorylistidine rich protein 2 continues to persist in the blood of individual patients even after successful uh, treatment and clearance of the parasite. Similarly, if you look at the uh, first negative, which is actually PCR positive, you could see that for microscopy, that was 15, which is uh, 7.10. Um, and, okay. and also for hard DT, it was uh, 4.90. So here it shows that uh, the result is actually as a result of uh, submicroscopic malaria infection. Conclusively, malaria remains a major public health problem in Africa, Nigeria, with a high prevalence of 64.89. 65.72 and also 67.39 for microscopy RDT and PCR, respectively. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, um, Sao. So, um, so, our next presenter is presenting from um, Ghana. His name is um, Kayode Shadrach. So, Kayode is presenting from the West African Center for um, Cell Biology of Infectious um, Pathogens. And he's presenting on equitable mapping of PFMAA, MAAP. Uh, monoclonal antibodies. Um, Kayode, please, you can go ahead with your presentation. Okay, thank you so much for this opportunity. Like he has mentioned, I'm presenting an epitope mapping of PFMAAP, or fully plasmodium falciparomerozoate associated amadillo protein. So basically, this protein is one of the novel proteins that was discovered by Dr. Aniwe in my lab. And it is one of the proteins that has been shown to elicit protective antibody responses um, to the blood stage of PF infection. Now, specifically, my aim was to actually map some monoclonal antibodies, three mouse monoclonal antibodies to the epitopes of the PF map protein. Now, we had to recombinantly produce the protein, the water protein, as well as the full length, as well as the different fragments and the domains of the protein. Thus, we have the N-terminal, the C-terminal, and the central amadillo repeat protein. 
and also subsequently went ahead to carry out endpoint titration of the monoclonal antibodies against the purified protein fragments. So first of all, we sought to analyze or characterize the protein by measuring its GIA activity with specific IgG. We realized from this graph here, the first one, we realized GA, that there's some level of inhibition when um, IgG was used against this protein. This got us a bit excited and we sought to continue this study and also analyze the immunogenicity of the protein. From the second graph, we realized PF, PF map shows a relatively high absorbance values with increasing dilution relative to the PFRH5. So this, this could have been suggested that um, PFRH, PF map actually has a relatively higher immunogenicity relative to the RH5 protein. So to our main study, we decided to start fragment the protein. There's the full length protein, as you can see in our gel image here, and then the various fragments, the various protein domains with BSA as our control. Now for the central results shown here, realize two of the monoclonal antibodies recognize some epitopes on the, full, on the C terminal of the PFMAP protein. Now, from the first graph here, you realize the full length protein had recognizable epitopes for all the three mon mouse monoclonal antibodies. That's the 18E6, 25A6, and 25D10. Up to seconds. However, N terminal and C, and the repeat region showed minimal binding or no binding at all, with just the C terminal recording binding for 18E6 and 25B. A6. And so this suggests that there's a possible conformational epitope in the C terminal, and we seek to conduct further studies to actually analyze um, and characterize the, the native form of the protein. So, future study, we seek also to assess the inhibition potential of the monoclonal antibodies in vitro and in vivo. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, our next presenter is um, Navneet. Navneet will be presenting on the detection of plasmodium from filtered urine samples collected from pregnant women from Ghana via loop arm malaria pan um, plasmodium kit. Over to you, Navneet. Okay, seems um, Navneet, are you here? Okay, seems Navneet is not here. So we can move to the next person. Um, so the next presenter is Silas, Silas Yeboa. Presenting from the University of Ghana, and um, Salas will be presenting on evaluating the effect of synchronization of the susceptibility of static and suspended plasmodium parasites to antimalarials. Salak, are you ready? Salas? Um, I think you're muted. If okay, yes, can you hear me now? Yeah, please go ahead. Okay. Um, Sadas, if you can hear me, I think there's something wrong with your internet connection. So, um, malaria screening and utilization methods to achieve a particular stage of the parasite. However, the, the parasite, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. Um, Silas, can you hear me? Um, if you can hear me, I think there's something wrong with your internet. Um, I could give you some time for you to work on your internet connection while the next person presents okay. and then we'll come back to you. How does that sound? Thank you. All right, no problem. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Awesome. So we're going to move to the, to the next speaker. Um, the next speaker is um, Ivanka. So Ivanka will be presenting on um, therapeutic response in plasmodium vivax malaria, genetic variability of primaquine prim metabolizing enzyme and gametocyte clearance. Um, Ivanka is presenting, um, Yanka is presenting from um, Institute Rene Rochou in Brazil. Please go ahead, Ivanka. Hey, everyone. 
everyone. I'm Mianka Salazar. I'm a PhD student at the Rene Hashu Institute here in Brazil. And today I'm gonna to tell you, I'm gonna tell you a bit about the, the, the results we obtained during my master's degree. So our research is called the therapeutic response in plasma vivax malaria, genetic variability of primaquine, metabolizing enzymes, and gametocytes clearance. To make it clear what I'm about to say, we have this diagram here, and on the left, you can see that CYP2D6 the is the main enzyme involved in the metabolism of primaquine, and NADPH cytochrome P450 reductase, also known as CPR, is responsible for the electron transfer that enables the proper functionality of CYPs. The gene for these enzymes is highly polymorphic, which can interfere with the metabolism of antimalarials causing therapeutic failure. There are no published studies that investigated the role of CYP2D6 and CPR enzymes in plasmodium vivax gametocyte clearance. So therefore, the aim of our study was to evaluate the influence of CYP2D6 and CPR polymorphisms on primaquine activity and plasmodium vivax gametocyte clearance. For this, as you can see on the right, we genotyped CYP2D6 and CPR for 100 subjects that were diagnosed with plasmodium vivax infection and treated with, with chloroquine for three days and primaquine for seven days. We then performed the analysis of copy number variation of CYP2D6 and quantified the gametocytes using PVS25 as a gametocyte marker on the first day when they hadn't started treatment and on the third day during treatment. And we also evaluated the plasma concentration of primaquine in the subjects on day three. Our results showed that the prevalence of individuals with impaired enzyme activity was 32% for CYP2D6 and 35% for CPR. And here on the bottom left, we show that although CYP2D6 status was not associated with the gametocyte clearance, subjects with CPR mutation had a lower reduction in gametocytes on day three, with gametocytes level up to eight times higher in individuals with CPR mutation, even when we take into account their sexual forms. Although we did not find an association be between CYP2D6 status and gametocyte clearance, we cannot exclude the possibility of such association. As in our study, we had few individuals with a slow and no metabolizing phenotype for CYP2D6. In fact, we did find an interesting result. Here on the, on the right, you can see that in our study, the only two subjects with this CYP2D6 no metabolizing phenotype had higher primaquine concentrations, that is reduced active metabolite and reduced gametocyte clearance on day three. Together, our findings support a hypothesis that CPR polymorphism is a determining factor for the maintenance of gametocyte density in plasma vivax malaria. So it is important to say that further studies are required to evaluate the impact of gametocyte clearance delay on malaria transmission and disease control efforts. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Yanka. Um, so we are going to take the last presentation for this um, lighting talk session. Um, before then, I just want to kindly remind you that please we'll be taking questions. We have about uh, seven minutes for questions. So please, you can either put your questions in the chat or you can unmute yourself to ask the question. And, and when you're asking a question, please try to refer, try to indicate um, 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 who, 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 which presenter the questions are addressed to. Um, Sadas, are you ready? Um, are you ready now? Yes. All right, yeah, please go ahead, Sadas. Okay. Um, so I'm Silas, and I'll be presenting on evaluating the effects of synchronization on the susceptibility of static and suspended plasmodium falciparum parasites to antimalarials. Now, during antimalarial screening activities, the parasites are subjected to certain synchronization methods to achieve a particular stage, which is uh, an occurrence in in vivo systems. However, the synchronization techniques that are used are not their, their effects on uh, the susceptibility of these parasites to antimalarials are not very clear. So therefore using uh, in vitro growth inhibition assays, the study sought to evaluate the susceptibility of plasmodium falciparum parasites under static and suspension conditions to selected antimalarials after synchronization treatment. So below I have a general outflow of my work. Um, and um, fast forward to the results section. So figure one A and B are some selected dose response curves that were obtained after analysis using a graph path prism. And uh, subsequently I have some tables that basically show summary of ICT values uh, of uh, these parasites under the treatments after they were 
screened against uh, dihydrate insulin and uh, chloroquine. So a quick outlook on these summaries show that um, suspended parasites showed uh, an increased susceptibility to DHA and um, chloroquine after the synchronization treatments as compared to the ones grown under static conditions. However, it was noted that after refrigeration treatments, the parasite showed increased susceptibility to these antimalarials compared to the subital synchronized ones. Now, the conclusion here is that due to the varying susceptibility patterns of these static and suspended parasites, I suggest that during antimalarial screening activities, um, in vitro cultures should uh, demonstrate these static and suspension conditions to shed more light on the potency of these antimalarials to the parasite. So in the long run, more synchronization treatments will be explored and more antimalarials will be screened. And also genotopic studies will also be carried out to explore the genes that could be associated with the various phenotypes observed. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Silas. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks to all the presenters for the wonderful presentations. So now the floor is open to questions. Um, like I said, if you have a question, please, you can write it in the chat. Or you could also unmute yourself to ask your question. Um, while we wait for questions, we have about five minutes, so we'll probably take uh, two or three questions. Um, I would like to ask a question to Kyle Day, um, just waiting for people to send in their questions. So, Kyle, I'm curious to know if um, how how conserved um, PF MAAP is across um, other Plasmodium um, species, um, particularly with P. Bergier. Um, how conserved is it, and are you also considering um, something like um, trying to complement a PB MAAP um, with a PF MAAP in order to like generate uh, a mouse model to study the um, effectiveness of this at the target? What's in target in vivo? Yes, yeah, so um, can I be heard? Yes, 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 I can hear you. So basically, the PF, PF map was, is, I think, is more specific to the falciparum species of the plasmodium. And um, for the various, the various fragments, um, we, we just began carrying out um, studies on their epitope. On the end, we are also still characterized and trying to characterize the full length protein to actually understand um, its reaction, especially in terms of um, where, we are, um, where we try to um, include um, antibodies towards this um, or against um, these proteins invasion process. So basically, um, Further studies are being carried out, and your suggestion is very much appreciated. So, thank Harry, you. try to yeah, try to continue in that lane as well. All right, thank, thank you. you, thank you very much, Kyle. Um, please, um, I think someone put something in the chat. I unfortunately can't check. I can't see the chat um, chat chat box. So, if you want to mute yourself, please go ahead and mute yourself, um, and then ask your question. Yes, my question is for Yamka. Uh, I was wondering, I, I know this is not time to explain. How did you confirm that your samples are not you know, related in order to avoid an overrepresentation? Hey, Eric, thank you for your Hi. question. Um, we really did not perform any kind of genetic analysis like IBT, and this kinship, in fact, I, I really don't know how it is. And we didn't perform an ancestral analysis, but we'll, we'll continue with this study now. We are um, enrolling new individuals into, into the study. So I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to do that now. Okay. okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, we can take one last question. Um, does anyone have a question? If you do, please unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, before we call this a day, um, anyone? One one last question. Uh, one last question. Okay, just go ahead. For, for Yanka, I think that was a beautiful study. 
Um, I'm wondering if there's other um, SIP mutations that we should be thinking of uh, for antimalarials, not, not just including primaquin, but others. And if you can comment a little bit, because we, we do a lot of drug approvals and, and safety studies and SIP metabolic um, interactions are, are important in, in regulatory cons considerations for that. Thank you. Hey, um, we have other SIP mutations, yes. Um, well, like I said, SIP to the six is really, um, there are a lot of studies for primaquine, but we have um, some studies also for chloroquine with SIP to C8. So some, some individuals with mutations in that enzyme, they have um, trouble metabolizing chloroquine. So yes, we have for other antimalarials too. Not sure if that um, answers your question. It does, thanks. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much everyone for um, being a part of this lightning talk. Thanks to the presenters, thanks to the attendees. So we have come to the end of the lightning talk. Um, the next talk will be at 1 p.m. I believe there is a break or something um, about this time. So please enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you so much and stay blessed. Bye.